Hey team, so a lot of people have shown interest in the join head unit. This one specifically is the 11.6 inch version. It's got 6 gigs of RAM and I believe 128 gigs of storage. I just want to show how fast it turns on and kind of go over a little bit of some things for those that are interested in buying this. So that was less than 10 seconds from when I hit the start button. Uh, this is not the screen that you'll see. This just happens to be Nova Launcher that I've installed on here because the default home launcher that comes with the join, I didn't really care for. Um, so I switched it up and I could change up my apps and stuff like that. Now, if you want to see the regular home launcher that join has, there's plenty of YouTube videos out there. And I think they even show the home launcher on the join website. So that being said, this is Nova Launcher. However, the settings remain the same. So if I go into settings, now you've you got their their default skin here and of course you've got wi-fi connectivity like for example i'm connected to my wi-fi here that's coming from my cell phone which i'm recording on whenever my bluetooth connects i've got an automation set up on my phone that when bluetooth connects to the head unit then it automatically launch my hotspot on my cell phone and then when the bluetooth disconnects it automatically turns off my Wi-Fi hotspot on my cell phone. Now there's other ways. There's a SIM card that comes with it and my SIM card's located in here. It's inside the dash. Some people also locate their SIM card in the glove box. Or uh, recently you can also connect a phone to the USB connection. USB connection looks like this. So you could subsequ subsequently use a phone to get your data on here or if you uploaded your songs you know via files onto the head unit because again it has 128 gigs of storage then at that point you don't even need to be connected to the internet at all i prefer to be connected to the internet of course because i run some automations through here um, along with using youtube music and spotify stuff like that so that being said coming out of wi-fi um, here you've got like, like a typical Android phone. You've got data usage as well that you can go through. SIM info, which I'm not even going to get into that because I don't think a lot of you are going to be using the SIM card. And the reason why is because Join doesn't have the alpha, beta, gamma sectors that we have here in the United States. They don't have all of them, right? So, for example, Verizon won't work on here. AT&T will work on a couple of different bands. And I had Google... Uh, Google Fi. I had Google Fi on here for a month or two and then I was like this is kind of silly because the coverage is spotty and it's not Google Fi's problem so much as it is Drawing's problem because Drawing again doesn't have every single band that we use here in the United States. Uh, so that being said um, hotspot and tethering so if you wanted to like if you had a sim card in here or if you had a phone connected to it then you could even hotspot and tether from the head unit itself to your cell phone but I'm not doing that. I'm, as I mentioned earlier, reversing that. I've got my hotspot on my cell phone and the join head unit latches on to the hotspot on my cell phone. So uh, coming out of here, uh, we've got display, brightness level. Mine, of course, is turned up 100%. Now, what is nice about the join head unit with the Jeep Wrangler is they've got it set up where it ties in with the computer that's in the Jeep. So, for example, I turn on the headlights. Now you'll notice that it dims. I turn the headlights off and it brightens back up. So that's great. Um, coming back over here to sound, I really like their EQ presets that they have. The EQ presets are really, really nice. So this is what the EQ looks like. And there's YouTube videos out there that kind of really go through and dive deep on the join and all the different EQ presets that you can set up and stuff like that. So I'm not going to get into that because I'd like to make this video as brief as possible for those that are interested. Going into the next setting, here you've got brake wire video in motion, which I don't need. Um, temperature units, mute the audio when reversing. I, I, of course, have that set to off. Backlight control, I don't really know what that does because there's no buttons on the join whatsoever. So couldn't tell you what that's about. Sound mixing scale, default boot volume. Steering wheel settings, here's a bummer. Steering wheel settings. So yes, drawing does tie in with your steering wheel. So all your buttons on the back 
uh, and all the buttons over here on the right side of the back, the volume up, volume down, next track, stuff like that, it all works from the drawing. The problem is this button here and this button here. I don't really care for the VR. It launches my Google. What's the weather in Amsterdam? Uh, and so great, right? Like that's, that's cool, I guess. Um, I would much rather be able to use this button for something else. I'd much rather define what that button does. And there are some head units that let you define what certain buttons do. Unfortunately, Join has that locked. So I'm glad that we got to go through that so you guys could kind of see um, what I'm talking about. What do I like, hit X on here? Let's see, back out, boop. Cool, so we're back in. Uh, driver's door position left. So those of you that are in Europe that have a door on the right-hand side, there's that. Of course, the home launcher, which I mentioned earlier, they've got their own launcher. Uh, I clearly am using Nova. Just to show you guys again, this is the Nova launcher that I've set up. So now I can, I'm able to show apps and remove apps and stuff like that using Nova. I really recommend that. I'm also able to use camera anytime I want to. So I'm in park but I can use it in drive and I often do use it in drive, which leads me to the next thing that I do like about the drawing is you can do multi-screen. So I find that to be pretty nice. And here I can navigate, you know, uh, say if I wanna go to Chick-fil-A, I can navigate to Chick-fil-A and I have everything that my rear view camera sees, I can have that up here or say I don't even need the rear view camera anymore It'll go all the way back to full screen. And let's say I wanna play some music. I can do that as well, using YouTube music. I've got my YouTube music here, the rear camera's up. Can also go back to full screen. And then we can do, let's say, any one of these other items, we can just do maps as well. So now we've got YouTube music on one side, maps on the other side. I find that pretty incredible with Join. I do want to go through this as well. When I go into multi-screen, or when I go into the multi-screen setting and I'm in reverse, it does not crop. It keeps everything as you would see it as if you were in reverse or as if the reverse camera was as full screen. So all this information here on the right side and all this information here on the left side, it still remains. It's just scrunched down. So drawing did a really good job on that. Let's go back into the settings. And uh, I mentioned about the, drawer, the driver's door position. This I think is 3368, I think that's the, yeah, so it kind of shows you what you can do with a sleep mode. You can do o OBD on here, which uh, you really don't need. And I'll get into that on a separate video. Um, so here's some different things. It allows you to install unknown sources so say you want to sideload an APK. Those of you that have an Android phone know what I'm talking about. Say you want to sideload an app and it's not available in the Play Store, you can do that here. Boot screen logo, that's pretty cool, although you never really see it. The only time I've ever seen the boot screen logo was the very first time that I installed it and the very rare time that I had to reset the unit. And then you see this boot screen logo where I've got it set to G. Let's go back into the settings here. Um, ba -ba -ba. Yep, we'll go on to the next one. You can turn on GPS location. I think it's really good. You saw the Google Maps earlier. It locks on very, very quickly. Google settings, I'm not gonna get into because it's just gonna show my Google account. Language and input, you guys, it doesn't have to be English, it can be Spanish. Here's the last setting. Get your developer options, date and time, accessibility about the device. Unfortunately, on about device, it's just running Android 10. Be really nice if it ran, you know, Android 11 or 12 ideally. So that's pretty much it. If you guys have any questions about the drawing head unit, please let me know. Um, the phone app is kind of silly. Uh, it's not the default. Where's the default? Here we go. This is the default phone app. It's really, really large, which is cool. You know, if you're driving at 65 miles an hour, especially in a Jeep, you guys know what that's like. It's kind of hard to keep the Jeep in the center of the lane if you've got some death wobble going on in the front. So having these buttons pretty large is nice. Um, you are able to Bluetooth your music as well from your phone to the head unit. That's pretty much it. And then here's where you can go and search for different Bluetooth devices. Um, for those of you that have the JSCAN OBD2, you can hook up your OBD2 right here via the Bluetooth scanner. 
and then using JSCAN, you can launch your JSCAN and then you can code everything that you want to code on your Jeep through the JSCAN app. Something I forgot to mention was you guys notice that I can press this button and it launches Google, but I can also say, hey Google. And it will also launch as well because I've got the microphone right here. I installed my microphone on my B pillar I found this on the web. of my Jeep Wrangler. And the GPS unit, for those that are curious, my GPS unit is installed on here. They recommend don't put it on metal. Well, I, I put it on metal. But I think what I'm going to do whenever I move to the second generation 11.6 inch joying head unit, which unfortunately also runs Android 10, but the screen is, let me phrase that, the bezel is thinner. It's got an 83% screen to body ratio, which this one has got a thicker bezel on here. But back to what I was going to say was I'm going to move my GPS sensor from here. I'm going to move it over here to the roll bar because I think that's going to be a little bit better because the roll bar is plastic. Here's some things that I don't like about the drawing head unit. I didn't get into on my previous, uh, previous talks was when I'm in reverse, uh, I can't control the volume at all when I'm in reverse. So I'll put it in reverse now. My rear view, cam my rear view camera is going to automatically pop up. But if I try to control uh, the next track and the previous track using the buttons on the back of the steering wheel, I can do that. That's not a problem. But I can't mute. This is the mute button for drawing. I can't mute the device. And the volume up and volume down, which you can't see. Oh, yeah, you can. The volume up and volume down does not work when I'm in reverse. So I'm, I'm clicking it right now. Nothing happens. But if I move to drive, now... I can go back and I can, you know, control my volume. So I wish that they would fix that. I also wish that they didn't have a chrome bezel because the chrome bezel, unfortunately, really, really kicks you in the teeth whenever you're driving with the top off. So that's a, that's a huge bummer. Uh, the second thing that I don't like is you can see how reflective it is. Like you can see my phone reflecting really, really badly on the screen, especially if it's a dark screen, like if it's a, if we're, See, now you can really see it. So I wish that the screen was matte. I would not I would even pay $1,000 if I could see an OLED screen that had some matte on it and uh, a screen to body ratio of like 98%. That would be really nice. Uh, secondly, well, not secondly, I don't even know how far down on my list I am of things that I don't like about it. But thirdly, fourthly, whatever, I had to put some cushion tape right here. As you guys can see, there is some cushion tape on there that I had to put because it was giving me a little bit of a rattle. Now, mind you, it's 11.6 inches of screen on a single DIN. Those of you that have ever installed a head, you know what I'm talking about, on a single DIN footprint. So the screen is, is massive compared to that single DIN footprint. And unfortunately, it was wobbling around. Now, it doesn't wobble around. I put some uh, cushion tape down here and I put some cushion tape up here. Uh, fourthly, fifthly, uh, whatever, um, this thing gets really hot. Like I, I can't touch this past four or five seconds because it'll burn my finger. I can feel it being really hot right now. So the screen puts out a ton of heat. Great for the winter, kind of crappy in the summertime. Now the screen does cool off. It is metal. The whole thing is metal. So it does have a solid feel to it, but because this entire, um, casing of it is metal, it dissipates a lot of heat. So sometimes in the winter time, what I'll do is I'll just take my vent and I'll lift my vent up and pour some heat or <laughs> pour some AC in the summertime um, on the screen until it cools down and then I'll move my vent back to where I like it. Any questions in the comments? Let me know.